My projects are usually simple and experimental, and I hope that they inspire people to try this stuff too. Making something that can fly isn't that complicated. By following a few simple rules, you can get this sheet of foam to fly in just like half an hour. But a little while ago, some of my friends that were majoring in mechanical engineering had occasionally seen some of my crazy projects which I had just laying around in my dorm room. We got talking about some of my projects, like my autonomous bomb dropping airplane, and challenges associated with it, such as the Arduino-based autopilot system and PID tuning and stuff. They were impressed because they had just been learning about PID tuning, feedback and control, and aerodynamics, and here I am, just applying these things in real life without any formal training. They were really excited about this cool little engineering class called Mechanics of Flight, and they kept suggesting that I talk to the professor and see if I could join. I emailed this professor and said something along the lines of, Hello, I am not an engineer, but I like airplanes, and your students keep telling me to take this class even though I don't have any prerequisites at all. And I kid you not, he replied by saying, I'm intrigued by your request, and I'm open to exploring the possibility of including you in the course. However, the course will be challenging without a background in fluid mechanics, engineering statics, computer programming, and mechanics of materials. Oh, and the class is already full. And after some conversation, he said, I need one more student to form another project team. So I met with him, and I got an ad slip to this senior level high 400 numbered class. What the heck am I doing? I had just finished my commercial pilot certificate, and so I knew aerodynamics from the perspective of what they teach pilots. But it was fascinating to learn it from an engineering perspective. There was lots of new stuff like boundary layer separation, Reynolds numbers, and drag equations, which they do not teach pilots. But interestingly, the professor did not know some of the basic things that pilots are taught, such as adverse yaw. You know, I think I'll do a video about this adverse yaw thing. The next three weeks we formed teams of four people to design a micro RC aircraft with the goal of achieving maximum endurance and payload. All groups were given the same RC electronics, which included the super tiny brushless outrunner weighing only 8.5 grams, a little 180 milliamp hour two cell lipo at 11.7 grams, and this thing that I like to call the brain, which is basically a receiver, brushless ESC, and two servos all in one unit weighing in at 7.5 grams. Each team member chooses one area of study to explore in depth. Aerodynamics, which involves lots of math and computer programming. Propulsion, which explores RC electronics and gathers thrust data. Structures, which explores and develops methods of construction. And stability and control, which studies longitudinal and lateral stability, directional control, CG location, and control surface sizing. I suggested that we go with a flying wing configuration, and the team said let's do it! Flying wings have very interesting challenges and advantages. They are very efficient because there is no tail or fuselage to cause drag. However, the challenge is making this one wing stable like a conventional aircraft. Normally, just a wing is not stable. It will want to continuously do backflips. This is because the center of lift is way up here at the first quarter of the wing. But the center of gravity, which is the point where an object balances and also is the point where everything rotates around, is located back here in the middle. The front part gets lifted up and the center of gravity just wants to keep on going straight ahead. In order to make it stable about this longitudinal axis, the center of gravity needs to be moved way up here in front of the center of lift. This way, it is pulling the wing through the air, and the wing will naturally want to reduce angle of attack rather than increase it. The plane wing also doesn't have anything to keep it going straight ahead. It can just yaw around sideways wherever it wants. One thing that you can do to make a wing stable is to add a big vertical fin in the back, or another thing you can do is to sweep the wings back. This is very helpful with longitudinal stability because by sweeping the wings back, we increase the distance from the front to the back. We can now use the front to hold all the heavy stuff, which brings the center of gravity forward, and we can use the wingtips like an elevator, similar to how a fuselage is normally used as a lever arm for the elevator to push down on. We can use the wingtips like elevators, both by putting the elevons out as far as possible, and also by twisting the wingtips down a few degrees. Sweep is also very helpful for directional control. When a wing yaws side to side, one wing moves into the wind, which produces more drag, while the other one moves away from the wind, producing less drag. Naturally, this will keep the airplane pointed forwards. This is also enhanced by having the center of gravity up front. Swept wings, however, are structurally less efficient because by sweeping the wings back, we shorten the wingspan while still having to structurally support the same distance of wing from the center. Swept wings tend to have greater span-wise flow towards the wingtips, and while you don't need to use any kind of airfoil, the airfoils that are designed for flying wings have their maximum thickness up front, and the trailing edge is really thin with reflex. We can use the trailing edge of the wing like an elevator to produce downforce, which pitches the whole thing up, creating positive lift. 
In order to optimize a design, coordination between the disciplines is critical. Each person is dependent on everyone else's design and everything is a compromise. Aerodynamics and structures guys want a straight wing for maximum efficiency, but the stability guy wants it swept back. Aerodynamics also needs to know how much it will weigh for different sizes and at what speed the power system is most efficient. We in the structures group experimented with different construction methods, starting out with balsa wood and monocoat, and then with composite wings where we would hotwire out a foam wing, and then we would cover that in fiberglass using a vacuum bag. When it came time to choose, however, I chose the method that I had already been developing on my own, which is hotwiring a wing and just putting tape on it. I made this spreadsheet with all the fixed component weights and the density of the building materials. This way, I can enter any combination of cord and span and sweep and airfoil thickness, and it will output the total estimated weight of the airplane. Brendan, the aerodynamic guy wrote a MATLAB program to tie all of this together. He helped me to turn my spreadsheet into a MATLAB program, which could then be integrated into all of his other code. So here is what the program does. This is the main program where we can input basic things like the density of the air, viscosity, certain geometry of the airplane, and our throttle function. Geometry of our root and tip cord, which gives us our taper ratio. We already calculated the ideal taper ratio with X-Flyer and kept that a constant. This MATLAB program automatically runs several combinations of span and cord lengths through several for loops. For each combination, it calculates the wing area, the sweep, aspect ratio, mean aerodynamic cord, and then it puts all these values into the weight calculator, which is based on my spreadsheet, which outputs the estimated weight back into the main program, which can now run the drag routines. These drag routines take into consideration the speed of sound, the Mach number, Reynolds numbers, and it calculates the coefficient of lift. Now we can go to the parasitic drag routine, which when given a Reynolds number and a coefficient of lift for our geometry, it returns a parasitic drag, which we can then add to total drag. This program can now output a different plot for all the combinations that it tried. On the x-axis here is airspeed, and on the y-axis is force. We have plotted the total drag for different airspeeds, one for the normal weight and one with an added payload. And here we have plotted our force of thrust at different airspeeds for whatever power setting we specified earlier. In this case, it's 50% power. Changing the power setting just moves this line up and down. This area in which drag is less than or equal to the thrust is the speeds in which we can fly at and the places where the drag is lowest is our most efficient flight speed. Each window graphs a combination of cords and spans for a given wingspan. We can see that generally, the higher the aspect ratio, the better the performance. And by choosing the graph with the lowest amount of drag, where we can use the smallest amount of throttle, we can assume that that will be our most efficient wing. And that's how we chose the geometry of our wing. Now to make this thing. The first thing I did is I cut out the geometry of the wing out of foam board so that we can more easily visualize the pieces of pink foam that we are going to need to cut out. We cut out wooden templates of our airfoils and place them on either side of the pink foam pieces with a 3 degree pitch down at the tips. And then we cut the wing out with the hot wire. We then hollowed out a place to put the equipment and made a firm balsa floor. In order to transfer the motion of the servos in the middle of the airplane to the elevons at the wing tips, I came up with this torque rod idea. We made the elevons out of balsa sheet and mostly covered the wing with tape for structure. I made this little balsa motor mount to mount the motor onto, and Nathan, the controls guy, made this little foam pod, which makes it more aerodynamic. It's kind of hard to visualize with flying wings the longitudinal position of the center of gravity, but in this picture, the wooden dowel is placed at the desired center of gravity, and so you can see that everything in front of the dowel is nose weight, and everything behind the dowel is tail weight. So by removing weight from the wingtips, I was able to most effectively bring the CG forward. The final specifications for the airplane are as follows. The span is 40 inches, the root cord is 8.5 inches, the tip cord 4.1, 31 degrees of sweep, and negative 3 degrees of twist. The root airfoil is an HS522 airfoil, and the tip airfoil is an MH60. And the whole thing weighs in at just 100 grams for an airplane with a 40 inch wingspan. And that's just 5 grams over my estimate. Here are some of the airplanes that the other teams built. Our official endurance record was 22 minutes and 15 seconds, which is absolutely incredible with a 180 milliamp hour 2 cell battery. And even though this technically wasn't a competition, we totally won. I'll put a link in the description where you can watch the entire endurance record flight video if you want, but it's a little embarrassing some of the things that I say out there when I'm all alone. Thanks for watching.